Hi, I'm Chris, N9CVR. In this video, we're going to talk to somebody via satellite. So in a few minutes, uh, kind of a cool thing is going to happen. Um, maybe not super uncommon necessarily, but cool anyway. Uh, basically, the International Space Station is going to be flying pretty much directly overhead. I keep looking this way because I've got a map up, up there. Um, it looks like it'll pretty much be directly over Milwaukee. Um, so those of you who know your Wisconsin geography, I'm only a couple hundred miles off of that. Um, so the International Space Station is going to be making a good long pass. And um, basically what the, uh, the ISS has a repeater on it that you can access. And it turns out you can at least hear it um, using one of these. So um, I've got it programmed to both hear and transmit to it. Uh, I don't know if the signal will get out that far. It's something we can give a shot and see what happens. Um, I'll kind of splice in some video how to do that. Um, and then we're going to see if we can contact anybody. All right, so programming the repeater. Uh, you can probably see on here, I do have it listed as ISS RPT, repeater. Um, you, I'm not going to get into how to, like, you know, which buttons to push, all that, to program this, or using Chirp. That's something for a different video I'll do later. Uh, but the kind of the important stuff to know, again, like I mentioned, this is a cross-band repeater. So that means most repeaters, um, you know, you'll, let's say, tune into 145.000, let's say. Um, and that is your, uh, that would be your downlink, uh, tone or downlink frequency. Basically that's what you're hearing from, from the repeater. And then your uplink would be shifted. So if 145000, it would be 144.4 or something if I did my math right and got my, uh, band plan boundaries right and all of that. Um, so that's a normal like two meter repeater. Well, here what goes on, um, the repeater on the ISS is cross band, which means it does two meter and 70 centimeter. So the downlink, what you listen to is on 70 centimeter. And that is, I'm kind of looking off to the side here to make sure that I get the numbers right. It is 437.800 megahertz. And then the uplink is on two meter and that's 145.990 megahertz. And that's what I just read off the website. There's another thing that you kind of need to know and some places they tell you, some places they don't. You also need a PL tone of 67 hertz. So once you get all that programmed into your, um, into your radio, you're good to go. Um, kind of a little courtesy thing. Uh, they, they, I mean, nobody can really stop you from not doing this, but they do want you to keep power level below. I don't remember exactly what it is. Um, but I'm just fine on the bow thing, but, um, they want to keep the power level low basically so that everybody and his brother doesn't just, you know, walk all over everybody else. Um, in reality, that kind of does happen. A couple other things to note about the ISS. Uh, it also contains an, or contains, uh, has, I guess, an APRS digipeter on board. Uh, so you can track the ISS via APRS, which is kind of cool. And you can send message back and forth and things like that via APRS. Um, Another thing that it has, it's got, I guess I'll call it kind of like a repeater-ish thing. Um, it, it acts as if a, it were a repeater, but it's kind of a direct contact to the crew. Um, 
in let's see in in the United States they actually have two different ones for uh, different ITU regions but uh, here it is let's see the downlink is 145.8 and the uplink is 144.490 um, so that's kind of cool I guess uh, my understanding is the astronauts on the ISS have a very full schedule and they only get about an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening to just kind of do what they want and if they choose to be on the radio okay but it, there's absolutely zero guarantee in fact this particular website I'm looking at it has in big bold red letters right next to that rarely used Another thing to check out, uh, 145.800 megahertz. Um, every once in a while, the ISS will send down slow scan TV images. Um, so those are something, again, I'll probably do a video about because actually I, I kind of nerd out about it. It's cool. Um, you'll occasionally see me post like short videos where I'm, I just... I liked sending memes over slow scan TV, so you'll see that. But basically, it's a way to you know think think of it as faxing an image to somebody over amateur radio. Um, so you need some software to decode that and whatever. But uh, they occasionally do that. So I did lie a little bit. Um, it's actually the ISS is going to go over more like Detroit. Um, kind of forgot exactly where it's going but still it's close enough that there should be a really good um, pass we got a few minutes yet and kind of start listening every once in a while not hearing anything yet um, the other thing is I've just got this little um, document up here that I can write down who I heard from, um, just in case I want to. Um, we'll see. I'll kind of start playing around with maybe the the QRZ logbook and put that in. So past that, we wait. All right, according to this website, uh, the ISS can just barely be seen from the corner of Wisconsin here, so I'm going to start really watching this now. <clears throat> it seems like for me to hear stuff, it kind of has to be close to overhead. Um, no, I shouldn't say close to overhead. Right now it should be just, just barely visible if I had a clear horizon. It should definitely be visible over trees and stuff like that if I want to hear it. The other thing I don't know is there's a bunch of rain coming in and I have no idea how that affects things. We'll see. Hopefully uh, I can hear anything or transmit for that matter. I'm going to try transmitting here for a sec. November 9, Charlie Victor Romeo, Echo November 5 4. So, Echo November 5 4 is my QTH locator. Nothing yet. November 9, Charlie, Victor, Romeo, Echo, November 5, 4. 
It seems like the, these maps are a little um, ahead of schedule uh, from what I've seen, so it might not quite be here yet, but according to the map, it should be pretty close to us now. Here we go. That was the carrier. We got something there. November 9, Charlie Victor Romeo, Echo November 5 4. November 9, Charlie Victor Romeo, Echo November 5-4. The cloud cover really seems to be doing something here because I'm not picking up too much. I got one um, one call sign, some partials in there. And that seems to kind of be it right now. We'll probably give this another shot when the weather gets better. 92 minutes later. All right, we're going to take another shot here. Um, looks like the ISS is going to go over, you know, maybe the Dakotas, just the west edge of Minnesota, something like that, and then up into Canada. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get a little better of something. But we'll see what happens. Again, I'm listening for that carrier to come through. This right now is just static. Um, but the sound of it will change as soon as the repeater carrier comes through. Surprised I'm not hearing it yet. Here we go.
or not. There's a lot of rain to the north of us, which is where the uh, ISS is right now, too. November 9, Charlie Victor Romeo, Echo November 5 4. Second there. November nine, Charlie Victor Romeo, Echo November five four. That was November 9, Charlie Victor Romeo, Echo November 5 4. I don't know if I got him. I only got a partial call sign on that. Maybe when I replay the video, I'll get it. So, uh, actually looking at the video, I was able to back out a contact. Uh, it was Kilo Oscar 4 Yankee X-Ray Juliet um, off of the ISS. Uh, well, the ISS repeater. So. I mean, I think that's really, really cool, considering that really all I'm doing is Baofeng with an upgraded antenna. Um, obviously, the better, correct way to do this would be to have um, a dual-band Yagi and basically be able to track the satellite. Um, you can either do that well on a nice day visually, <laughs> well, at least at night, or um, uh, there's there's actually antenna tracking uh, devices that you can uh, basically motorize tripods, if you will, that you punch in what satellite and um, your phone will command it to track the satellite. So that's the right way to do it. Um, but I made a contact, and so can you. So hopefully you enjoyed this little um, escapade, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm pretty pumped. I'm honestly pretty pumped. I had heard from a guy in my club that you can hear the ISS off of a Baofeng, which I was very impressed with. And, um, you know, I apparently w was able to transmit to the, um, to the repeater on the ISS. Again, with a Baofeng and a Nagoya 771. So, uh, if you like this, th this one definitely, you know, give me a thumbs up for this one because I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty proud of it. Um, any questions, comments, etc., hit me up on the uh, on the comments. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, and if you do that, hit the notification bell too, because otherwise you don't get to see what I uploaded. And we'll see you on the next video. 73.